I'm going to check my phone if I can get a signal, see what the forecast says, have this, but if it gets much worse, then yeah, I'll be packing up and heading off. I'm out today for a bit of bike packing and a wild camp. I'm looking to find somewhere to set the tent up and I'm in amongst some old buildings, settlement. There was actually four in this area within the Cairngorms National Park and in Scotland you had the Highland Clearances and I think these may have been part of that. I'm not entirely sure. But I need to find somewhere for the tent. And I have gone back to my Robins Starlight 2 for this trip. Tent all set for tonight. Just need to get some water supplies. I can hear water over the back, so I'll just take a little donder over and get stocked up. Plenty of water for tonight, for my food and a few coffees. I've also got some uh, rum with me. Matter of fact, have a coffee or some rum just now. I think I'm going to have some rum. It's been a long day. I've really been struggling with the filming. My last two or three trips have been a disaster. When I was on the West Highland Way at Christmas, I didn't have any audio. And a couple of trips have just, yeah, I've just kind of bailed. My most recent trip was about four weeks ago, three weeks ago, here in the Cairngorms. And I was planning to do a summit camp on Derry Cairngorm. Now, the weather forecast was superb, absolutely fantastic. And the camp spot was lovely. And... It just changed. That's the thing with uh, the weather in places such as this. It just does its own thing. Now, it wasn't forecast to be windy in the slightest, but it got up to about 30, 40 mile an hour gusts. And it was about seven o'clock at night. I decided just to pull the plug and bail. Yeah, wind. Within one hour, the wind has really picked up and I was checking it with my wind speed meter and it was gusting up to, well, well over 20 miles an hour. I'm going to check my phone if I can get a signal, see what the forecast says, have this, but if it gets much worse, then yeah, I'll be packing up and heading off because this tent is not really designed for extreme weather. I was hoping it was going to be a still and calm night. Well, this is the Scottish mountains for you. Ah. We'll see what happens in the next hour. Every camp I have been on, usually the biggest issue is wind. The MSR Access 1, the problem with tents such as that and the latest one I was trying out is that if it has a steep side on the back, you know, just this high wall on the tent, nine times out of ten, that will be the side that the wind hits. And I've had to brace with uh, uh, my tripod. <laughs> to try and brace it to stop it from bending in. It's only about half past five 
I don't think the winds are meant to die down until about midnight, so it's going to be a long few hours. I just wish the wind would die down. It happened during the West Highland Way when I was uh, camping at the Bridge of Orkey. The weather was wild and I really thought that night the tent was coming down. Back out with my new tent, which I am trying out. This uh, Weichel Venture 1 from Germany. It's a tent I used in my last video for a summit camp. And during that video, it was a really still night. Tonight, it's gusting 25 miles per hour gusts coming through. And by tomorrow morning, it could even be up to 70 mile per hour. So this little tent is going to struggle, I think. It's about midnight and I've had to brace the side of the tent using my tripod. I actually had to do that with my MSR access as well. The wind direction is basically hitting the full side of the back of the tent. I think at the moment my favourite has been the dual mid. But even at that, I hate the faff of the inner with it. You know, you've got to go and get one from AliExpress in China and make it work. The other thing with the dual mid is it doesn't have a double zip where you can just open it from the top. Have a look out. Yep, the weather's shit. Close it, zip it up. No. Yeah, MLD designs. I emailed anyway, asking if they would put a double zip on. Even to the one I was wanting, even if it was just mine. And they said, no, nobody's ever asked for that. There's no need for that. Right, whatever. Uh, yeah. I thought I'd come out with my Starlight 2 because I haven't used it for quite a while. I quite like them. A lot of people don't like the weight. Now, I had this on my scales and it was coming in at 2.1 kilograms and I also done a modification to the front poles where I can now remove them they're kind of shock corded and there was a guy on YouTube I had seen he has a video explaining how to do the modification so I'll leave a link to his video down below and a link to the parts needed to do it and the parts are really cheap six pound I think they were something like that so I'll, I'll leave that down below but it does help with packing the tent up but what I had done with the bike when I come in here was I'd actually took the inner out and packed the inner and the fly sheet separate in the panniers What a morning, folks. Absolutely Baltic. Yeah, a hard frost last night. Tent absolutely covered in the bags and the bike. Oh, I didn't want to get out of the sleeping bag. But the sun's coming up and it's a beautiful morning. It really is. Nearly packed up. I have to be honest and say that I'm really struggling to get everything back in the bags the way I had it packed yesterday when I left doesn't help with everything being iced up and frozen packed nothing like what it was when I set off yesterday <laughs> I've just more or less thrown everything in and into the panniers time to go go 
I shall speak to you the next time, folks. Uh, yeah, until then, take care. And I'm going to get warmed up. So thanks for watching as always. See you soon.